so nice to be here and so nice to visit with the, the young people that are getting ready to take over things. And uh, that's what I'm going to talk about, what you're getting uh, ready to take over, what we ought to do about it to improve things. To fear the people, the people should never fear the government today. <laughs> Oh, you know, the world is coming to an end. You're going to have a depression that's going to 
last for 30 years because the financial bubble has burst and we have to bail out the country and the world. So what did they do? They started passing TARP funds and they got the Federal Reserve to create $15 trillion worth of credit. But guess what? They bailed out the people that caused all the trouble. They bailed out the people who had been benefit, the people who should have gone bankrupt. They scared the Congress and the people and saying, but you know, if we don't do that, there will be a depression. There will be a depression. And in a way, they were right about there. There would have been a depression for the very people who deserve the depression. You know, the ones who were ripping us off and the ones who got bailed out. But what did they do? They scared the people and the Congress into bailing out the people who were doing the benefits. And guess what? The middle class lost. Taxes uh, became higher. We have more inflation. Jobs are lost. We went into a recession. And uh, houses, you know, people lost their houses. But this, they weren't able to do that unless they scared the people. So we have to be very careful to be uh, aware of what the governments so often have done over the years. But we need a government that will be straightforward with the people, tell the people the truth, and not could use these tactics to either do irrational things economically or do irrational things in the, in the foreign policy area. That's the very least we deserve. We deserve truth from our government. Inflation is very, very damaging. 
and, uh, it, it, and they pretend it doesn't exist, but inflation hurts some people a lot more than others. If you're on a fixed income, it hurts you a lot more. If you're on the receiving end of certain funds, uh, you know, on Wall Street in a bailhouse, that, that's, a, that's a benefit. But uh, one characteristic of the destruction of a currency, uh, as Austrian econ economics teaches, is that when you destroy a, co and a, a currency, devalue the currency, make it worth less by printing too much of it, it damages the middle class the most. It wipes out the middle class, and wealth gravitates from the middle class to the wealthy. All you have to do is look around today. Uh, Wall Street's doing quite well. The banks can borrow money at 1% and loan it out again to the government at 3%, and uh, they make enough money. And they won't loan it out because of the circumstances to businesses that are trying to get started. So even though there's a lot of credit out there, there are certain people that won't just let this credit go. And this, this is a consequence of policies that should be changed and can be changed because we've given up and we've allowed the uh, people to regulate the market and take over rather than letting the market operate. The market, excuse me, the market, uh, the free market can provide the jobs. Governments can provide jobs. That's not the responsibility of the government. <laughs> In a free society, the responsibility of the government is to protect your freedom. And a few other things, provide a strong national defense to protect property rights, protect contract rights by giving us a sound currency. I've got a prohibition against counterfeiting. You and I can't counterfeit. counterfeit. Why in the world do we allow the Federal Reserve to counterfeit? <laughs> It's rather understanding liberty as Thomas Jefferson understood it. He understood where it came from and the responsibility of the government. And, and our liberties don't come from our government. It comes from our creator or it comes to us in a natural manner. And it's a long time. So if our life and our liberty is a consequence of a natural course of events or a gift from our creator, uh, it, it fits to say, it falls through to say that if it's your life and your liberty and you're ambitious and you work, the fruits of your labor ought to belong to you. You should have it. That's an old-fashioned idea called the incentive system, which we've essentially undermined. Today, the incentives and where all the money goes to try to redistribute wealth is not the creation of new wealth. It's all put into paying for the lobbyists and paying for the politicians to go up and grab hold of a small piece of a pie that is shrinking. And that's why we have to change something. The pie has to be growing and it has to be in the marketplace and it has to be a reward for your effort. But because this is ending, the system that we've experimented, especially in the last 40 years since we destroyed totally and completely the restraints on, on the Federal Reserve and on our monetary system and, and, and no longer have the gold standard, this last 40 years has been an experiment in, uh, in, 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 a, uh, in a policy of economics called Keynesian economics, interventionism, planned economy, welfareism, inflationism. The results are in. It doesn't work. It's not worth the effort. If you don't change it, it's going to get a lot worse. We want to opt out for free markets and sound money and property rights. That's right.